Okay, I'm going to try to be brief. Something completely different. And this is not homebrew night. I've screwed up. Please forgive me. I'm going to show you something that I just find interesting. So Skip had a, one of the things he had in his list of, I noticed, of topics for the convention coming up was something having to do with building stuff, right? So once this comes up, I try to keep my eye on interesting things like that. So your machine is, come on. This is interesting. I've never had this happen before. Oh, there, oh, there we go. You have a leisurely machine. Um, okay, there we go. Okay. So, oh, cut off a little bit, but no matter. This room is filled with people who have built things in the traditional analog way. And then there are people who build completely digital systems these days, like software-defined radios. Well, it turns out that it's nice to be able to play with some of the analog stuff, but maybe there's some middle ground where you can, where you can use hardware-defined radio. You can play with things, but with nicely engineered boards that allow you to sort of build modules and put them together. I've been corresponding, and I, I like this guy's product. This, his name is Todd Carney. He's K7TFC. He's out on the West Coast. He's in Washington State. And he has a nice website, Mostly DIY RF. He's been doing this for about a year, I think. He makes very nice little modules that you can play with and put together. And the nice thing is that these solve some of the problems about, well, okay, I have an impossibly small device with impossibly small edge connectors, and how uh, me with the fat fingers am I going to connect stuff? So he's trying to put these out at very reasonable prices. Most of this stuff is between 10 and 25 bucks. And you can build blocks with it. So what I want to show you is I've been, I, brought, I brought something and notice how much, how polished it is. I literally spent 15 minutes hooking this up, but I, I just thought I'd make you aware of this. So it's mostly DIYRF.com. And there's just some amazing stuff out there if you can have a nice package of glue around it. This is the Silicon Labs SI5351A. This is a very, very popular chip. This has been around for maybe five or six years. It has three programmable digital synthesizers on it, which will put out, each of them will put out any frequency you'd like up to 200 megahertz. And you can also coherently control the phase. So you can put out something on uh, output zero and have output one be exactly the same frequency, but 90 degrees out of phase. Those of you who build receivers, if you have two things that are exactly 90 degree out of phase, you're starting to build um, complex, reasonably complex receivers. So those chips are around if you have an ecosystem around you, which Todd has sort of nicely done. I'll show you that in a minute. And then there's this thing called, for example, the I2C bus. One of the things that you will find with people who do home brewing is you get this spaghetti of wires, right? You get 20 wires into this and 30 wires into this. I2C is a very nice bus. It's three, three wires, a data line, a clock line, and a power line. And it's also multi-drop. You can have any number of devices on the bus and they're tri-state, so they all listen to each other and they, you can, um, as long as you don't have a collision, okay, you can talk to all of them with just a one sort of serially chained wires. There are these nice little LCDs, which are ultra cheap and very bright. And then this thing over here in the corner is, this is a frequency counter. It cost me $6. And I handily mounted it in this Arduino tin, uh, this, this uh, Altoids tin. Two power lines, two frequency, two, uh, two counter lines. And so you can have a nice little six digit frequency counter for six bucks delivered. Um, you could get it cheaper on AliExpress, but I paid $6 on Amazon. So you start to build up little pieces and parts. And I think, Skip, this is something that I really hope that somebody who does more of this than I am, I'm just you know, playing with, would, would be able to show people pieces and parts, right? Things you can swap in, things you can combine. So what I did, what I'm going to show you a little bit of just tonight, is that he has managed to package up some of this into this very nice little VFO. Right, 
there, there are essentially four really basic modules you want in a radio. You want an oscillator, you want a VFO, you want an amplifier, you want a filter, and you want a mixer. If you have those four, you can make a whole lot of radio architectures with those four by mixing, combining, selecting your frequencies. So this little carrier board takes, that's an Arduino right here. He has three flavors. This one is an Arduino Nano on the board. He also has two other processors with something called Zhao's. There's a SAMD21, which is the thing on that board, and an ESP32. They have maybe 16 times the memory of an Arduino, and they run about 16 times as fast. They're, they're very, very zippy. And I'm going to now take my horrible Franken mess out of, the, out of here and show you. On this carrier board, that's the entire processor, that little postage stamp thing. It's got a USB port. You program it that way. And so he's got this nice little carrier board, which has got not only the processor on it, but has this carrier board for the SI5351A, this three output. You can see the three SMA outputs here. I've got one connected. And then he's got a lot of other nice sort of life support. This is an I2C bus. He's got four copies of it. He's got an SPI interface, another simple three-wire interface. He's got a couple of direct inputs for a rotary encoder, if you'd like. And he's got something called a one-wire protocol, which you can buy some temperature sensors for. So you can imagine if you were building yourself a transmitter and you wanted to make sure that it shut down if, it got, if the transistors got too hot, you could sample the temperature that way. This is, and you program this in the Arduino environment. So anybody who's, in, who's used to doing an Arduino environment, you can also program it in Python. But I've been just using the Arduino environment and most all the libraries work with it. So this is just this nice little compact board that has all the life support that you can very easily play. And you, this Franken spaghetti I've got here is basically just me taking the I2C bus and driving one of these tiny little LEDs here, LCDs here. The only thing I need here is that I have a regulator because I need five volts to make the backlight light up. This is a 3.3 volt board. So I sort of generate five volts separately. And that all runs off this little nine volt battery. So I'm going to see if I can remember where, there we are. So what I've done is before I came here, I loaded a little program in there. That's the RF output from the frequency counter. And every one second, you'll see it click up by 10 kilohertz. And then when it gets to 14.200, it will reverse. It will just go back to the beginning. And there's the little LCD that's saying hello to the club and telling you what it's set, being independently verified here. I think there's maybe 35 bucks in all of this. And I've got one output. If I hooked up another cable, I could have another output at exactly 90 degrees phase shift from this. And let's let it roll over, 180, 185, 190, 195, 200, back to zero. And I'm very sorry for anybody who's trying to do CW around here on 20 meters, because I'm just running through this pad with, with, a, with a CW tone. Um, yeah, this is RF. That's about a 7 dBm signal, perfect for feeding into a mixer. So while I let that run, uh, and it'll just run, um, what I want to show you is that, just to end up, what can you make with this? Well, with a mixer and, you know, a, uh, if you'd like to put a, a filter in front of the RF that's not drawn here, you can make a direct conversion receiver with that. So if you want to receive 7, 1.175 megahertz, you can take one of those oscillators, mix with that, you get something in audio frequency, run it into an audio amp, and you have a direct conversion receiver. That's one thing you can do with one of the three outputs. Or you can be clever and you can do a single conversion superhead. You can mix up to an intermediate frequency, filter, use a beat frequency oscillator or BFO. You may be familiar with that. Come down again to audio and you now have a, you can play with a single conversion architecture because you have two outputs you can use. Well, I told you there were three. Why not do dual conversion? So you can actually go up to a high IF 
mix, go down to an intermediate IF and go back to uh, audio and you can put filtering and amplification in there and you can start playing with these blocks. So I find this pretty compelling. It's cheap. You can play with it. If I can sit here with things I stole from an Arduino kit and hook it up and get RF out the back end, there's a lot you can do with this. So to conclude, I'll just tell you that one of the things you'll find on Todd's website is, if your eyes are good, you will see that Todd also has a broadband IF amplifier. This one has automatic gain control, if you don't want to blow your ears out. Um, you can even do a little dual gate MOSFET if you like to do the old dual gate MOSFETs, which aren't really made too much anymore. Um, he's got a little nice little SMD carrier board in it. And he's a very, he does a very nice eight pole sharp crystal filter. So there's your IF filter right there. So I, I highly recommend you check him out. He's worthy of your support and the stuff just works. And compared to well, a few years ago, it is truly astounding that you can do that. Try to do that with any, anybody here build an analog oscillator and try to keep it stable on temperature. It's really hard really hard. You know, you breathe on it. <sighs> if you let it warm up for an hour, you know, well, maybe. It's amazing. Bill, you were going to say something? Yeah. How long does it take to sort of together? 20 minutes, maybe. Because I only had to hook up two or three wires up to this to make it work. I didn't have to work hook 20 things up. Um, and I could use the same bus. I mean, the same bus right now is controlling this that's controlling the, the, uh, the oscillator that's generating this. It's just, it, in this case, he's just routed it on the board very nicely for you, so you don't have to worry about it. But, um, you just have to write some code, right? Uh, it's a very short program. The next thing to do is to use this, which is a rotary encoder that speaks I2C out the back. Then you could actually sit there, and rather than this program, you could sit there and dial the frequency you so it, it, it becomes possible to sort of, again, blocks, move them around, mix them around. So we're so busy at this step. I was about 20 minutes to build this. <laughs> oh, we've been, looking, we've been looking at things like this for other things. Um, I have to keep up. It turns out that there, um, there's a lot of stuff being generated up there, out there, if you, if you just are aware of it. How do you think we survive on science budgets, Skip? <laughs> and you got to have a lunch, so, you know. You know, hey, exactly. Um, anyways, uh, worth, your, worth your time to check out. Yeah.